I'm gonna tell you what, <clears throat> it was a uh, one heck of a Tuesday. So this actually starts on Monday. Uh, the hurricane's coming. The rain is coming. It's downgraded to a tropical storm, but it's already made landfall. And I know I have about 12 to 13 hours to get out uh, before I go right through the middle of it. Which I've been through tropical storms and hurricanes before. Not horrible. Don't like them. Uh, I barely missed Rita. I barely missed, what was that, uh, one that hit Florida a few years back. Uh... I actually was on the, at all the roads, all 75, all the roads were leading north. In fact, uh, there was no southbound traffic. The toll road was open, and it was every lane going north. That happened at Rita, too. Uh, stuck in Texas for that. That was a good time. But I end up uh, getting out of that because, well, I looked at the radar and saw this. Now, the hurricane moved further north than people thought it was going to. I was uh, just on the outside of Memphis, so I thought it would be prudent that I uh, get as far into Missouri as I could. Lots of rain, but once I got towards Kansas City, I literally drove through a wall and right out of it. But, yeah, that was Monday, so I was pretty tired when that happened. So I get up to Collins, Missouri. I decide I'm going to get up early, take off. As soon as my 10's up, uh, just keep on going. The rain's coming. It's coming in little spurts, but uh, I know I got a couple of hours before the heavy stuff comes, you know, once I leave. And I was right, like I said, I got uh, just west of Clinton, Missouri. Literally, I could see the blue, and I just drove right out of it, sunshine the rest of the way. That's for later. So, I end up uh, going over to Collins, Missouri, get me a spot. I'm a little dubious of this. I, I'm very careful about where I spot or I park. Obviously not that night. It's pretty full up. Find me a spot. It wasn't ideal, but I go to bed. And I've been there uh, to this place a lot, so usually nothing ever happens. Well, tonight was my nights. So, about 11.45... My truck shakes like crazy. Now, for all of you keyboard warriors uh, who are saying I, who watch my short and my TikTok, all this takes place in about eight and a half seconds, literally. Uh, I got my dash camera, so I know I'm okay. I don't know what's going on. I hear the truck just boom, it wakes me up. I get up, I look out the window. I look out, I don't see anything wrong. I don't see anything. I hear a crunch, I get up and step like this and look down and there's the back end of a three car hauler on my fender. So the first thing I have to do is I start grabbing for my phone and grabbing for my pants at the same time. I grab my phone, I jump up like here and by the time I get to the driver's seat, I'm not gonna lie, by the time I got here, he was already there backing up and uh, he backs up that way, and it's dark. I'm not lying. The parking lot's dark. Does a loop like that, and he's out. Boom. Three-car hauler with a hot shot. Old ratty Dodge with uh, his uh, logo duct taped with paper on the side of his back door. You can't read that in the dark. Didn't see a license plate. I was like, you know what? It's probably on the back, which would suck, but I've got my dash cam. So let me show you what happened there. So first of all, for all you hindsight 2020 guys on TikTok, I'm laughing at you. Your comments have been gold, but they don't bother me at all. And I find them real hilarious. It's real easy to be critical after the fact. So yeah, whatever. Uh, let me show you what happened. This is, this is funny. So as we sit here and go through the video gallery, uh, it stopped recording. Yep. Read air, read air, read air. I got nothing for 45 minutes. I can't tell you how mad I was. 
you know, I wasn't mad at the guy for hitting me. He made a rookie mistake. We've all been there. We've all made stupid mistakes, done damage that we didn't mean to. Um, he took off like he shouldn't have. And uh, I was going to see a guy get run over by an inattentive driver. Uh, and he took off. Probably didn't have insurance. Probably had it tagged uh, non-commercial. He's probably, you know, it, it, these hot shots are, they're a menace. These guys uh, shortcut. Half of these guys don't have a CDLs. But that's beside the point. He takes off. So, uh, dash cam's not working. Got to call the police. Uh, because I know I have to file an insurance claim. Uh, yeah, so I call the cop, get a number. Missouri State Troopers, nicest guy in the world. He, I think he was happy to have something to do. Uh, so, I had a nice time talking to him. We joked around for a few minutes, and he says, look, realistically, uh, the chances of us finding this guy is zero. I was like, I, I know. I said, this is just insurance stuff. So, I call work, wake up a very, wake up a dispatcher who's uh, very unhappy, uh, fill out the report, do all the paperwork, send in all the pictures, and uh, I'm looking at the truck. <sighs> I'm really not even angry at this point. I'm just ready to go back to bed, which I do. We get out looking at the damage in the daytime, and it's it's actually pretty severe. Now, I've, I've been through this before. I've had hoods get tore up and all that. And uh, the last one I had on my red 386, uh, this was in 28, last part of 2017, 2018. I was coming out of North Dakota, hit a deer. And uh, that was $15,000 to get that fixed. I, I, you know, a lot of you guys are like, it doesn't cost that much. It does. I mean, especially to get it done in an authorized shop that the insurance company is going to pay for. Uh, they're not going to pay some fly-by-night guy. So, the hood, the paint, the bumper, the, the grill, all that. About fifteen grand. But here's the thing on this truck. We might have got lucky because... This truck is a lot more expensive to fix than that 386, but I think we might have got lucky. Sorry about the bugs. I, I wiped out an entire species apparently this morning. These are four piece bumpers. They got an inner and outer and they're split down the middle. And when I tell you these are expensive, that's not a joke. These are very expensive bumpers. A painted new cover over one of these costs more than an aftermarket chrome bumper. That's not a joke. These are very expensive to buy them in halves. So they busted the inner structure out of this side here and uh, broke this, shoved this in, broke this. But this right here is the part that scares me. I don't know how bad this is. Uh, and of course they damaged my grill. It's not Actually, it's not too bad, really. But, let's open the hood. Now, let me tell you why I got lucky. I got lucky because of what I'm about to show you. Now, I replaced this yesterday evening. That's another, I'll tell you that here in a minute. This was completely busted out from here. This was just flopping. But, they didn't break this. And, uh, he really didn't go too far into here even though that's broken. Uh, so you can kind of see it. Well, not really right there. But these things like this, these plastic pieces, these are the expensive pieces, which sounds funny, but uh, yeah. I also got lucky with the headlight. This is, uh, that's stripped out. So we got to pull this off and uh, twist this around. So, we're probably going to be in for a new headlight structure, uh, but we put some tabs on it to hold it in for now. Didn't break that tab, but broke these two here. So, I think we're going to be in for a new structure, but uh, aside from that, I think we're okay. I've actually got to replace this light. My biggest fear in what cost so much the last time, and I think we're okay on this truck, was we actually separated on the last truck the 
inner structure from the outer structure. It's bonded. And uh, you can get that repaired or you can get that replaced. And I'll tell you what, get it replaced because a repair is only as good as the person repairing it. And uh, sometimes it's just best to go OEM. Now all of these are easy fixes with the exception of this part. This doesn't look like much, but this is critical. And this pretty much supports everything around here. All of these other repairs are basically sand, fill, and blend, except that one. And that's going to be the expensive one. So that's going to be interesting to see how much this costs to get fixed versus how much to replace. But since it's not separated, it's not going to cost as much as I thought it was going to. So we'll see about that. So after a dash cam replacement uh, and three and a half hours of sleep, I headed towards Sioux Falls quietly hoping somebody would hit me in the same spot who had insurance. I mean, after all, a fella can dream, can he? So I used my love points, got a six pack for $4.79, which is actually cheaper than Walmart, which is shocking. I uh, hope they're at least as good as Walmart. It's pretty easy. It just uh, snaps right in. Then it just... Uh, twist right into this this open spot here yep she's working let's see check the other one real quick all right now I know what you're saying well what about the other cameras you know that one and that one and that one I agree what about them they all work they have great pictures great resolution you got your front here, which is nice. This is the driver's side. Great, great views. So, yeah. And the passenger side, which would have been nice too. Now, Smart Drive is a good system for the most part. Well, it's hot out there. But it's a, it's a good system for the most part. I'm stuck on these things. I wish they'd sponsor me. But... Once the keys turned off, they power down. And, uh, which doesn't make any sense because my analog cameras, you can go by them at night and the infrared's still on. Don't know why. But the cameras are off. So, I'm going to talk to somebody about seeing what we can do if there's a fix or if there's. A setting or something that we can just leave them on for like a period of time like my 10-hour break would have been phenomenal to have that um, like I said I yeeted the other dash cam uh, and uh, replaced it at 1245 at night I had that Garmin that I did the video uh, the uh, review on uh, it's back in you know I don't like it for a lot of things but at least it works uh, so I got that going for me. So, yeah, so we get up after everything, take off. I, I'm, I'm feeling kind of down, man. I got, a, I got a lot of phone calls to make. Lots of things are going on on Tuesday. Now, hear me out. This isn't the first time this has happened. I've had my trailers hit and ripped open. I've had my hood, uh, I've hit deer. I've had my hood hit by other trucks. Um, just, I've had it happen. It, it happens. And it's just part of the business. So I'm not, you know, I could blame the other guy. I could wish death and karma and all that stuff. I don't wish him any ill. You know, there's an old proverb about this, about, uh, you know, don't curse your enemy lest you be cursed also, more or less. You know, you might be in the same boat as he is someday. And, uh, the results the world will take care of this guy this guy will reap what he sows he'll get what's coming for him and you know I hope that you know I hope the best for him I hope he figures it out so like I said I'm, I wasn't upset at him I really I was just upset at the whole situation it's just more stress I didn't need so I get up there to uh, Sioux City I've already had a heck of a day I've got to go get estimates I've got to get uh, 
my tablet's screwing up, so they need to download that. I'm also out of depth, which I fill up at the yard because it seems to be the best, cheapest depth I can find. And uh, if you think you're getting ripped off for depth at the pump, you are. So I go and uh, get up to the yard, and that's when the good things start happening. I end up uh, telling him what happened. I show him the bumper's all flappy. I was like, "We, I got to figure out something to do with this because if I don't, we don't take it off or something." Or if I don't find a replacement, even if it's a different color, I said, it's going to get ripped off. And I said, I know these halves are expensive, and they're, they're very expensive. And the mechanic says, hey, you know, those are, those are two-piece. I was like, really? He says, yeah, they got the inner structure and the cover. I said, can we get an inner structure? He said, how long does it take to fix? He said, man, 30, 45 minutes. He said, I said, can you do it? He said, yeah. So within 35 40 minutes they had uh pulled the bumper off split it into the three pieces because we didn't we didn't undo the passenger side took all the damaged stuff out slammed an inner structure in put it back together was back on the truck and it's solid uh and i'll probably end up well well i'll get to this in a minute but uh he's like the headlight he said the tabs are broke puts it right back where it needs to be built those little arms to keep it straight he says you're gonna have to get this fixed and i was like yes i know and truthfully uh this next week i'm gonna go ahead and uh try to set up an estimate for hopefully the first of next week so yeah so we get the headlight in we get the bumper fixed and basically everything else is cosmetic at this point now like i said if it was just that piece is up there, I truthfully, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. He got into the fender pretty good. That's that's pretty serious. Um, but it's that piece below the headlight that actually is the most critical piece, believe it or not. So, take it into a body shop and get it fixed. And I imagine if we run it through the insurance, uh, probably got to put a new headlight structure. Probably build the... Uh, the inner structure to it. I got a thousand dollar deductible I gotta pay. And uh and then get the repairs and I'm gonna have them put a new grill in. So we're probably looking for just a repair. I, I don't know. I'll I'll let you guys know when I get the estimate. So where I got the fifteen thousand from, like I said, is uh if I gotta put a new hood on. And hopefully the damage is light enough we don't have to. But like I said, uh last truck it's it's not a joke it's it was just mm, nine ten thousand for the hood alone and uh with the paint and, and the labor and all that of course i had to buy two new headlights for the last one and uh it was just it was just a mess the the red truck i've done a video on that that, that body shop did a horrible job and we will not be using them and part of the other reason it costs so much is because I use authorized body shops. I take it to the dealer. They're like, there's people that can do it better. Yes, they can. But they don't use OEM parts. You don't know if they're using new or used. In fact, this guy might go to have a deal with somebody like Vanderhags, pull a uh, pull a junk hood out, scuff it up, shoot it down with paint, and charge you a new price. That happens. There's shysters everywhere. At least with this, I have the backing of a dealership. I have receipts, I have uh, parts lists, I've got proof that everything was as described. And a lot of times, that's worth the money. So, I don't know man, I just suddenly a wave of optimism came over me. Like I said, I wasn't mad anyways. I was more mad at the dash cam than anything more mad that I had to, that I was woke up and was up till two in the morning screwing with this. And then more mad that I had to wake up at five to take off. Yeah. So if the guy who hit me is watching this, I ain't mad at you. Even if he ain't watching this, I ain't mad at you. Things happen. But I get up to Sioux Falls I uh, get my load dropped. I go and uh, over to the Loves. 
friend picks me up we go grab a bite to eat play some darts you know have a drink and uh despite the day starting off really early and crappy and had the potential to be a bad day finished pretty strong when i saw that the damage wasn't as serious as i initially thought when we cleaned things up and when we looked uh i got real optimistic that this is all going to be okay the truck's still functional he didn't get into my tire thankfully for that these are brand new steers the last thing i want to do is buy another steer uh these days i'll have to tell you the story about buying four steers in three weeks that's a that's 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 a sad story uh but you know i didn't even really drink that last night i had one drink a couple of diet cokes had some really good brisket tips and barbecue a couple of fries and uh shot a couple of good games of darts you know it's pretty relaxed and I didn't allow this to to bother me or eat me up because in reality there's nothing I can do about it apparently there's not a whole lot I can do about this fly either as you see him flying around uh, so you know I put the I put the TikToks out because I thought it was funny then I posted it on YouTube as a short because I thought it was funny. And then I sat there and watched the internet eat itself because I really think that's funny. Moral of the story is, guys, you just, you can't be shaken by stuff like this, especially if you're a new owner operator and all you new guys, things are gonna happen. Things are gonna happen. People are gonna hit you. You're gonna hit things. You're gonna flatten tires. You're gonna you know, when I ran over the, that strap, that's the second time that's happened. And it was another, you know, $1,400. These things happen. You know, I, you know, I wasn't mad about that. I was about I had to shell out $1,400 when I didn't need to. But that worked out too. Everything worked out. And, you know, the older I get, you know, I'm just about 50 now. Yes, I know, I, I look like a stunning youth. Uh, I learned a lot. But one of the things that I've learned, and I've talked about this before, curb your anger, man, curb your emotions. It does you no good. It wouldn't have done me any good to yell at the cop. It wouldn't have done me any good to go chasing half naked down the street chasing that guy. I thought I had it on dash cam, honestly. It, it, I can't get mad at the dash cam. I can all I can do is replace it you know these things are gonna happen and you just if you learn how to roll with it and not let your emotions take over and go crazy and yell and throw a fit you know if that's what you need to do do it and get over it I mean because it's not productive and I've that's one of those lessons that I've learned over time is that just there's two of them now great now they're gonna mate and I won't be able to kill them any fat oh, they're gonna mate faster than I can kill them because that's what happens but like I said the one thing I've learned is that being mad at uncontrollable situations are a complete waste of time so yeah oh one of the guys on uh, YouTube he uh, he made fun of me about my big nose that was funny you're welcome. The reason my nose is like this is because I'm Mediterranean. Yes, I'm from the Caucasus Mountains. So basically, I'm the whitest guy you'll know. So there. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, me and Jamie Farr. I suppose I'll let you guys go. You guys uh, enjoy yourselves out here. And when these things happen, if you can take care of it and the guy's decent, cool. If the guy takes off bolts and runs and he just leaves you hanging, it's it's doable. Don't despair, it's doable, guys. So, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. Enjoy yourself out here, make some money. And when these momentary troubles come, just remember, they're momentary. 
So I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next video.